get the real deal now. Gonna kick this sorry ass out on the street. How's it going, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to week number 32 of the Lowdown Show Brand Wars on the Holds by Wrestling Podcast. We are your Canadian-based WWE podcast that reviews and discusses Monday Night Raw and Tuesday Night Smackdown from the past week. Also, during the show, we have our Twitter poll segment called the Luke Gallows Polls, hosted by our very own Corporate Cappy and WWE Headlines, where we talk about any important news in the WWE every week. The Lowdown Show is broadcasted live at Spreaker at Spreaker.com slash NHBWP. After we are done recording it, it is posted for your listening enjoyment in full on Spreaker itself, YouTube, SoundCloud, iTunes, and Stitcher. So go check us out wherever is easier and convenient for you to listen to us. If you would like to join on the conversation and have your thoughts and questions read on the podcast, tweet us at Noles Bar WP or by dropping a comment on YouTube. I am your host, the self-proclaimed greatest host, Kyle Masters. And I'm always continued to be joined by my co-host, Mr. Corporate himself, the blissful boss, Corporate Cappy. Hey, yo. Hey, yo. Hey, Corporate yo, Cappy. Chico. We are almost at Survivor Series, getting so close. We are so amped up because we're going to both NXT TakeOver Toronto. I was about to say Brooklyn. I know. I always <laughs> think of it as Brooklyn because I've been there like uh, three times. So TakeOver Toronto. And Survivor Series and Sign are going to both. Like, I feel like Mojo eight. Raleigh right now. Like I feel like I just drank like eighteen. <laughs> and you don't. You don't get hype. You stay, stay hype. hype. <laughs> yeah, it's after his eighteen Red Bulls, and all right, out to the ring we go. But uh, yeah, it should be an interesting week this week. Interesting. Um, More like actually interesting weekend. Epic weekend. But it's been an interesting week in the WWE this week. Uh, definitely, probably the best go home shows from both brands I've seen in a long time. That's for sure. Um, we'll see what happens. I mean, uh, we will see what happens live. Actually, <laughs> we will see it live. <laughs> but it's going to be a really good weekend, I think. Um, it's fine. So yeah, like they're they're finally getting back to making Survivor Series relevant. Yes, yes, and we'll get into that with the review. But guys, as you just heard, we are going to both NXT Takeover Toronto and Survivor Series this year. And it will be something special for the podcast, which will be posted after the weekend. I am doing a vlog of our entire weekend there. So just some mini clips put together and uh, whatever I can record. And just for you guys, you may get a face view from both of us. Yeah. See our glorious faces. You already see us on Twitter. <laughs> yeah. Like, or that, you know, whatever. Anyways, yeah, I will be doing a vlog for us this weekend. So something special. And then we have our predictions for both events coming up this week as well along with the lowdown show we had a lot of content this week and we had our survivor series dream matches with the sunday night heat a lot of content for you folks this week lots been a busy week here at an old spired wrestling podcast mm-hmm. um so we'll get on with the show let's we'll start off as we always do your tweets out there and we'll start off with the raw tweets first set of tweets come in from gamma at gamma and you one on twitter he puts raw was an eight out of ten didn't hate the show didn't love it but the brand brawl was awesome. Can't wait for part two tomorrow as he was talking about SmackDown. Next set of tweets. Oh, no, he has another one. Another week without jobbers. So big plus there. Also, Jericho is proving more and more every week that he is uh, one of the greatest of all time. Agree with that. Yeah. That's uh, uh, 100% true. <laughs> Anyways, uh, next set of tweets come from Irrelevance at Forlorn on Twitter. He puts, I enjoyed Raw. In my opinion, that was one of the best endings of Raw in a while. It had me sweating so much. I'm in the shower. <laughs> there had there wasn't any promos needed tonight. Just entering showings actually showing that every team can work as a team slash unit. People are mad because it was a show of heels and faces versus heels and faces. And I'm like, isn't that what's happening at Survivor Series? He is right on that. He gave Raw a strong 7.4 tonight four. not a lot of con- cons nothing huge to dislike tonight uh just some nitpicking stuff highlights of the show was ellsworth going on the list of jericho uh, it's gold plus i hope sammy wins the icy title and if he goes to smackdown hmm, interesting next week comes from tony mercer at recrem why not on twitter the show itself wasn't anything special but the brawl was fantastic seven out of ten for me based on the brawl alone well, strong rating for that. I mean, that brawl does deserve a strong rating. My God, was it ever good. Um, 
the whole promo itself was yeah cool. and we'll get into that with our review next set of tweets comes from glorious greg at gillies 929 on twitter he puts raw was very good this week not going to not going to love the... god gillies what are you doing all the teams somehow find a way to work together and the ending of the brawl at the end of the show was amazing. I give Raw this week a 7.5 out of 10. My only down is that Bo Dallas is back to... And where is his other tweet? Jobber status with the crying faces. <laughs> I'm upset about that too. That's, that's pissed. We'll get into that in a review though. I am definitely not pissed. Why not? I'm not a fan of Bo Dallas. Oh, you, you don't believe in Bo? I do not believe. Oh. I want him to Bo leave like out the door. Ouch. I guess you're keeping up with the corporate comments. I don't know. I'm not a, never been a fan of Bo Dallas. I'm sorry to any if I offend any of you out there. <laughs> if you offend anybody, any huge Bo Dallas fans out there. Yeah. Do we have? Is there? Do you, do you think Bo Dallas has fans? Like you thinking about? Know. Do you think it literally has fans out there? He might. Maybe. <laughs> I know JD from NY has his action figure. What? <laughs> he has his Elite Series figurine. Okay, which Bo Dallas is it though? Probably the N. I don't know. Maybe the NXT one. <laughs> I don't know. We've talked about too much about Bo Dallas. Let's move on. Yeah, I guess so. All right, <laughs> we'll move on. I'm trying to find a set of tweets here. I missed one. I I missed one. I think it just skipped over. It wasn't attached to the raw Twitter tweet. Okay, it's not there. Anyways, we're gonna do our next set of tweets, and that's from our number one fan on Twitter. You know what that means. You. So good to me. Oh, that's right. It's real Michael Chow at real Michael Chow on Twitter. He continues to have his hilarious tweets and his continuing entrance music on this podcast. Not sure how long it's going to last, Michael Chow. You're being outbeat by uh, a surprising fan, Glorious Greg. He's been tweeting at us more than you. Shameful. Shame. 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 Anyways, Michael Chow puts for Raw. Raw takes it takes it this week 8.5 out of 10 i like the booking of the of matches teaming the faces with the heels pros hashtag jobber free mondays love it jericho's lady gaga scarf puts them on put put them on man (laughs) raw versus smackdown best of brawl series yeah i love that cons brock lesnar does what he does best nothing and no more james ellsworth please Question for the show. He puts, since Shane is on Team SmackDown's men's team, would you have liked to see Stephanie on Team Raw's women's team in return? I think if she would actually have wrestled in the last year. Yeah, because when's the last time we've seen her wrestle? It's been a long Nikki, time. Against Brie Bella, but that yeah. wasn't even really a match. I don't even know what the fuck that was. I, honestly, you know what? I would, I, would, I would like it, though. If I, uh, I think if she got... I know she, she trains with Triple H. But I think if she were to work on it a little bit and have just a couple of spots in the match. She could have replaced Alicia Fox at least. <laughs> I think anyway. Why? I'm surprised they have Alicia Fox there and not Dana Brooke. <laughs> and, and Dana Brooke's the mascot. Oh my fucking God. Yeah, like, she, seriously. She's great. She's the best looking mascot I've ever seen. Uh, sure. <laughs> Why not? We got another question here from our boy on YouTube. Right, boy I can't do remembering you this week. I'm yeah. not screwed up. See? I remembered you, King See, reme- see Cor- Corporate Cappy remembered you. See, it, This was my, see, I fucked up. So I don't know why you continue with this hashtag beat up Cappy stuff. I don't <laughs> hashtag know what that's beat about. up masters, how about that? Yeah. His question is, uh, are you excited for Survivor Series? I'm extremely hype. Yep, we are extremely hype because we are going to Survivor yes. Series. We'll be there live and in color. Yeah, if anyone, I don't know if any of our fans are going, but everyone lives pretty far. <laughs> but if anyone's listening that is going to Survivor Series... Tweet us. Tweet us out. Maybe we'll meet up. We'll see. Um, but thank you, Kingstone Pulley. As always, yes, we are beyond hyped for Survivor Series. We don't Series. get hyped. We, we stay hyped. Oh, God. <laughs> uh, Too much Mojo Raleigh in this video. I guess. We'll move on to the SmackDown tweets. We'll start off with Casey Salvis at Salvis94. He puts, great show, no complaints, can't wait for Survivor Series 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10, wow. Jesus. That is incredible. The big score. Uh, I'll get into my scores in the review. Next tweets comes from Tony Mercer at Recram. Why not? Good show. 8 out of 10. Taker is back. Who can't be happy about that? 
I would have to agree with you with that. You can't teach that. <laughs> Next set of tweets, Irrelevance at Forlorn. He puts 8 out of 10, nothing wrong with the show. Surprised that Miz won, but I still say the mer- the match between Miz and Zayn will be great. We'll see, we'll see. <sighs> Um, no complaints. Curious as to what the Undertaker's role will be in the future since WrestleMania doesn't define him anymore. That, that was an interesting line. Mm-hmm. And it's gotten people scratching their heads for sure. A lot of people today. Next set of tweets. Glorious Greg at Gillies929. He puts awesome show. The IC title was good even though I didn't like the finish. It was funny and cool seeing King Booker. Booker. King Booker. The brawl between the women was great and the last segment between smackdown and edge and undertaker was just phenomenal i think there's a pun intended there because <laughs> aj uh, was in the ring too <laughs> I, oh puns everywhere i give smackdown a nine out of ten this week what a show my god my god is right except for like two parts of the show we'll yeah. get into that next and last set of tweets for smackdown michael chow at real michael chow SmackDown was okay, 7 out of 10. Felt like both shows delivered this week and pushed whatever they needed to get fans excited for the pay-per-view. Pros, Nia Jax gets eliminated by the wall of SmackDown. (laughs) Uh, Take it in, woman. (laughs) I love it. And Taker says, fuck the streak, I'm back, bitches. (laughs) Basically. Yeah, I love it. Um, Cons, the rise and fall of Ziggler. Team SmackDown's t- tag team versus who gives a shit? <laughs> no more Ellsworth, please. Seriously. <laughs> Michael Chow's being corporate. He's like, get on my side. Thing. Fucking hate Ellsworth. He needs to go away now. Okay, we said it before. Stay away from the title picture, man. Like, just go yeah, it's, away. He's being the mascot for Team Survivor. Yeah, I guess. Team. Question. Who do you think will face Undertaker at WrestleMania? My prediction is either John Cena or Goldberg. Hashtag Taker your last. Apparently it's Brock Lesnar that's last. Yeah, everyone's going to be last. This is the last tour <laughs> for Goldberg. John Cena. <laughs> Probably John Cena. I want John Cena. Everyone wants John Cena. If they go another route, I'll be pissed. Who knows? We'll see what... Maybe Undertaker's not going to retire. I mean, he's good to have to go for another year after this. I'll never retire. Maybe that hip surgery he just had like fixed a lot of shit with him. And he's like, you know what? I could probably go for another two years. Maybe he's going to start doing the Ric Flair thing where if he the next time he loses, he retires. Yeah. Oh, God. And then Michael Chow, and finally, have fun at Survivor Series, guys. You guys deserve it, and make sure to take it all in, man. I'll be taking it in and more. Oh, God, man. It's like, too what? bad we can't go to the, the talk is Jericho thing with Kevin oh, Owens. That, that would, would be, be great. awesome. It's fucking expensive. Like, we're already paying yeah, for... this weekend's already going to break the bank yeah, for us, so fuck? that's why we didn't go to Raw in Buffalo this week, unfortunately. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It wasn't that... It was good of a Raw, but, you know, I'm actually happy in a way that I didn't get there to go. There wasn't a lot of wrestling yeah. in the show. Yeah. So, we to do the next part of the show, and it's hosted by our very own Corporate Cappy, and that is the Luke Gallows Poles. That is right, the Luke Gallows Poles, hosted by our very own co-host, Corporate Cappy. It is where we read polls off of fun WWE polls on Twitter. Go check them out, guys. They do some fantastic polls, some funny polls. All polls for your liking so go check them out and interact with their polls so luke gallows polls this week some interesting polls this week mm, not uh there, there's a couple there's not a lot so all right going into them. so take it away corporate cappy which one of these nxt superstars do you expect to make an appearance in the royal rumble samoa joe bobby rude shinsuke nakamura or ty dillinger i vote three out of the four <laughs> so, samoa joe Bobby Roode and Ty Dillinger are up there of who I think are going to be in the Royal Rumble. Shinsuke, Still no, be because champion. I think he's going to be the face of NXT for like the next year. So I'd say all three of them. The winner, Samoa Joe, 52%. Yeah, it's probably going to be Samoa Joe, and I think he's going to go to SmackDown too. He, he, he seems like he'd be good for SmackDown to elevate them. I mean, it's not like they need to be elevated even more. They're just as good right now. But, like, you know, just to get another boost, another superstar. Seems like Vince doesn't want any of the former TNA guys on Raw. <laughs> it's true. Styles is over there. God. Uh, yeah. Shinsuke had 29% for some reason. Ty Dillinger, 8. Bobby Roode, 11. Ty Dillinger's going to be in the Royal Rumble at number 10 if 10. he is in it. He's going to be at number 10, guaranteed. <laughs> that would be unbelievable. This one, 
I don't really know some of these people, but I know a couple. Which one of these former NWA or WCW tag team champions would you put in the WWE Hall of Fame first? The Midnight Express, hmm. the Rock and Roll Express, the Nasty Boys, or the Steiner Brothers? I just have to say... Uh, it'd be the Steiner Brothers or the... <sighs> yeah, I'd say Steiner Brothers for sure. Do you sure. even know who the Midnight Express or the Rock and Roll Express are? The Rock and Roll Express was... Uh, wasn't that not Michael Hayes? And his partner? They were the, what do you call it? The Freebirds. Oh, they were the Freebirds, yeah. I don't know. I just picked the Steiner Brothers. Rock and Roll Express sounds familiar. God, it's bugging me. If you guys know out there, post it in yeah. the comments. But I'd say just Steiner Brothers because I know who the Steiner Brothers are. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's what everyone voted for this because yeah. the Steiner Brothers won. Next. Uh, which one of these tag teams should challenge the New Day for the tag titles next? Allos and Ganderson, or Gal- Allos. Allos. Gallows and Anderson, the Shining Stars, Enzo and Cass, is our own Sheamus. I'd say Allos and Ganderson. <laughs> sure. <laughs> nope, the winners were... I can't even make that up one up. Enzo and Cass. I was trying really? To put the words, but it didn't work. Huh. Enzo and Cass, and then Sheamus and Cesaro was second. <laughs> yeah, they're not going to be a tag team for long. Enzo and Cash, sure. I mean, they deserve a tag team title shot, but yeah, yeah. Wasn't Anderson I'd, sure. I'd vote the club for sure because they need to be dominant right now. They were only 20% and the Shining Stars were five. Who fuck voted Shining Stars? <laughs> You're high. According to the Twitter fans out there, which what was your opinion of Raw this week? Great, above average, average, or terrible? They voted for great. Uh, that was only great because the ending. So if you had to take the whole show itself. I voted for average. I'd say it was average. Maybe a slightly above average. Maybe like just just at above average. Just. Um, those are all their predictions for... Oh, we'll wait for that. Yeah. That podcast. Uh, what was your opinion of the return of King Booker? <laughs> Thumbs up. Thumbs up yes. 80%. Who are the 20% that didn't like this? <laughs> Who doesn't like King Booker? <laughs> With his Bow down to your king. <laughs> Where would, maybe they, maybe the, the twenty percent wanted Queen Charmel. <laughs> That's a Queen Charmel fan. <laughs> uh, what was your opinion of the Undertaker's appearance on SmackDown nine hundred? Thumbs up. Thumbs up. Eighty nine percent. Eleven percent didn't Who? like this. Who? What? These guys are just goons, man. Get no respect. And according to the the Twitter fans, what was their opinion of SmackDown this week? Great, above average, average, or terrible? Great, sixty five. I'd vote great. 100%. SmackDown was unreal this week. And according to the last poll, the Twitter fans, which one of these programs won this week, according to them, Raw or SmackDown? They voted for SmackDown 81%. Jesus, man. Raw was good, but like, God, that poll blew it out of the water. <laughs> and we'll the talk tw- about it Twitter now. Twitter fans have spoken. Yeah, <laughs> they have spoken. All right, notes for the show. Both great go-home shows. SmackDown definitely won this week, and we'll get into the ratings of how I rated it later on. But both great go-home shows, as I said before, probably the best go-home shows that I have seen in a long time. I love the cross-brand appearances. That was fantastic. It's exactly what they needed to do for Survivor Series. Um, It still felt that Raw was getting the upper hand, though, in some of the brawls. Like, on both shows, still kind of, it still felt like Raw was getting the upper hand. Even though they got their asses kicked on SmackDown, it still felt like they got the upper hand. Just because Nia Jax is fucking killing everybody. (laughs) Um, It didn't do anything with the tag teams. That's one thing I wanted to point out. That they should have done some cross-branded stuff with the tag teams. Maybe not all of them. But But at least least one or two of them. Like the Ascension show up on Raw and take out the New Day or something like that. Or at least the champions go at it. You know, like New Day and Slater and Rhino. Something should have happened. That could have been like the best comic relief for for Raw right there. If they had shown up and just cut a promo on each other. (laughs) Like, they should have done something like that. And I'm upset that they didn't. So yeah, like, how are you supposed to build? You, you could have done something games. on Raw. You had three hours for Christ's sakes on Raw, and you le- you left to do you left everything at the end with yeah. Goldberg and Lesnar in the the, the end brawl. You, you had so much other time. It was a bunch of hot garbage, like usual. <laughs> they could have at least had something with the cross branded tag yeah. team. Why so, would they do the women and the men, but not the tag team? I don't understand. It's like they don't give a shit. And the tag team division is the best it's ever been in a long time. <laughs> so SmackDown Live again, better show this week from start to finish. Um, some pros for Raw and SmackDown this week. Uh, I'll have to admit, a lot of people are going to disagree. Goldberg and Lesnar did hype up their match a little bit more this week after that confrontation, even though they didn't brawl, which everyone would love to see. No, it, it's be- I'm glad they saved it okay. for, su- for Sunday. 
Yeah. It was better okay. that they didn't go at it yet. Yeah. I liked how they had the whole, we'll, we'll get into that. Yeah. Later. And then again, a pro cross brand brawling, loved it. Every bit of it was unreal. It got me so hype. I'm really more, I'm more hyped than I was for Survivor Series now. Um, some cons, same old shit for Raw, too long, too much garbage, too much hot garbage, like you said in the middle. Too many goddamn commercials on SmackDown, even though it's only two hours. They got to stop with that shit. There was two for the icy title, for Christ's sakes. Um, and just useless things here and there, which we'll get into as well. So Raw this week from Buffalo, first time in four years. We missed that. Doesn't matter, though. It was our right show. It was a good thing that we missed it. I mean, we're going to take over Toronto in Survivor Series once in a lifetime for us. Yep. Like, I don't think we're ever going to go get go to those we, again, maybe, but we, we'll we see. Can go, we can go to the next Raw in Buffalo. It's okay. Yeah. <laughs> or the Raw Live event they're getting in uh, March, actually. Uh, so, Buffalo, the ending... I'm, actually, before I say that, I want to, like, say that, because this is the first time we've seen Buffalo's crowd, because we're all usually there. They had a good crowd this week. Yeah, they did. Yeah, I, it, I think it's maybe different when, we're, when you're there. I wonder if it's like... Because when we went, it was their hype. Like it was, it was a good crowd when we went there. Like the last couple of times I've Buffalo's actually we've gone, a good, like yeah. a, a above average crowd. Even the SmackDown crowd when we went for the first episode of SmackDown, that was a good crowd as well. It's usually above average. To, to this week, it was really. I good. think it's because it was a go home and it was more hype. Yeah, maybe a lot of people are going from that or going on Sunday yeah. too. They were really hyped for Goldberg. He was really over with the yeah. crowd, but ending was the best part of Raw, though for sure, without a shadow of a doubt. They did a good job hyping the Survivor Series men's match. Um... They did a good job with the women, sort of, a little bit. I mean, they kind of just, uh, uh, I don't know. It, it's weird what they did with the women's this week on Raw. It, I, it, I, I think they did better on, they did better on SmackDown in a weird way. Like, we saw Bailey on SmackDown, like, brawl on somebody. Like, something you wouldn't see. She's a hugger. She's not that type of person. Just we saw another side of Bailey that you don't usually see. Um, but other than that stuff on Raw, Raw was mediocre. Um, I think it, besides the brawl, Jericho was the other uh, only highlight of Raw. As always, he's we, he basically saving Raw every week. Are we counting the? Are we talking about the promo or just Raw in general? Raw in general. Okay, because there were other guys in that promo too that were good. Yeah, um, um, but yeah, Jer- Jericho, Jericho continues to carry the show. Unreal man, this guy at his age right now, this time of his life, best work he's ever done. So the start of the show, we had all the superstars at the front of the stage, and just basically Seven McMahon and Mick Foley hyping all the Raw teams. And that's basically it. I loved it when they showed the New Day. <laughs> they're just they're wearing the, captain hats. <laughs> they are wearing captain hats and they're just doing their dance. <laughs> oh, and then she said something about uh, the women's team and like Cesaro pointed at Sheamus yeah, or something. Cesaro's like pointing at Sheamus. <laughs> He's like, hey, that's you. <laughs> that was great. <laughs> I don't know if anyone's seen that. Go back and look. It was fantastic. Uh, but they opened the show with Reigns and Owens teaming together against Cesaro and Sheamus. Um, just, I guess, trying to build some chemistry between Owens and Reigns. It was, a, I guess it was a decent match. There's obviously the obvious tension for both sides. Sheamus and Cesaro not ever working together. And obviously Reigns and Owens being two guys that want to do everything by themselves. Um, the ending was the best part. Sheamus bro kicking Owens and then Reigns leading it into a spear. But and then <laughs> Owens was the legal man still. <laughs> Reigns put him on top of <laughs> Yeah, him. he just grabs him and puts him on Two top. Two weeks in a row, win. Kevin Owens wins. By but <laughs> he doesn't even know that he's actually won the match. By someone putting him on top of wall. No he one put him on, on top Jericho. last week. In a way, oh, Reigns put Owens, Owens on, Owens on someone for Superman two weeks in a row. Yeah. <laughs> for the win. And Reigns has been helping Owens win. <laughs> the last two weeks. That's so sad. But one part of this match I want to point out is that... It, it made me mad with the bro kick thing because, like, right when he turned around after the bro kick, like, he saw Reigns go off the ropes and he could have, like, moved out of the way. Yeah. It, it was, was like, oh, it was I wonder a really where he's bad going. Sell. You should have been looking the other way. It was a really, really bad it was, sell. It was just really bad the way they were positioned, but yeah. whatever. So we moved on to the Jericho backstage scarf segment. Oh, God, my God. This was the best, best thing ever. Oh, my God. Like, Jericho's there with, with Strowman and, and Rollins. He gives him gifts. <laughs> they open the box <laughs> and he's like there you go they're scarves of Jericho try it on man Rollins oh. is kind of like holding it like Ugh. <laughs> another great line from Jericho try it on <laughs> this guy just continues to be funnier and funnier the corny and then Braun Strowman just <laughs> looks at Jericho's scarf and he's like I want that scarf he opens it up and he looks at it and he's like, I don't, I don't like the scarf. I want your scarf. He's like, so, so he goes, okay, okay, scarf. fine. I'll wear this one. You can have this one. You know, it has anchors on it. I'm like the anchor of the team here. 
<laughs> oh, and then God. Strowman rips up his like seven hundred dollars scarf yeah. and says, "I don't, I don't like, like scarves." <laughs> okay, <laughs> and I don't like you. Wow, <laughs> who's writing your script? <laughs> like a four year old? God. <laughs> no, I'm but, sorry. No, that's Vince McMahon. <laughs> or Kevin Dunn. Or Kevin Dunn. We're gonna make him say that. <laughs> so Jericho's Keep got the PG man. Yep. So Jericho's got a, an anchor scarf now. <laughs> God. Uh, and he just he wears it. He even wears it coming out in his match later on. Um, which we'll get into later. So Bo Dallas gets squashed this week. Why? I don't know. <laughs> He's been doing the squashing. For like the past month and a half, they've but then been, get squashed this week. They've been hyping him up to get squashed. That's yeah. what they've been doing. So the Bo Dallas record's over now. <laughs> the Bo streak. I don't know how many matches is that. If anyone knows, let me know. Um, the guess is just to make Zayn look stronger, I guess, yep. for a Survivor Series match. But he beat Do- Bo Dallas really quick. Like that was, for a three hour show, that was a quick match. They literally have nothing else for Bo Dallas. That's why. Yeah. And we got the awkward, that awkward cruiserweight segment backstage, the, the, the address by Brian Kendrick, where it's everyone's like just staring at him. Then we get the freaking, I love how they, they pull a, a Sin Car being mad backstage moment here when everyone knows about his history backstage and they actually like act it out. That's so bad. He was trying to be like the voice of reason. Yeah. The whole thing. And it led to a match with like uh, Kendrick and Sin Cara and Botch Kendrick Cara. won. Botch Cara. Kendrick won. Hyping himself to go against Kalisto at Survivor Series. Not Whatever. a very good match. The crowd was not no, into this match. It was match really dead. Have been either. No, we should have had more cruiserweights, and I bet you they were on superstars. Um, and uh, do you have this? Do you have this in car news safe for the the news part? Oh no, I don't. Okay, well we'll just talk about it now. He yeah. um, <laughs> they made him ride six yeah, hours. Okay, they made him drive six hours to Raw this week because he's not able to go with the team on flights. <laughs> Because it's anger issues. you got to treat him like a kid. Maybe he'll learn his lesson. Oh, my Lord. So, we'll move on to that Jericho match. Jericho, Strowman, and Rollins versus The New Day. So, all three members of The New Day in the same match. First time, I think, since what? WrestleMania? I don't remember the last time all three of them were in the same match the together. The only thing I can remember is League of Nations at WrestleMania. That's yeah. Um, I didn't really pay attention to this match, though. It really it bored the hell out of me. Um, the New Day were giving away merch at the beginning of it. I think that was a probably a big highlight. They had a shopping cart, and they borrowed Raven's shopping cart full of... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and they put all their merch inside it. You know, we had the the they had the Halloween ones. They had to seriously give away. They had some old merch that they probably they had, had never sold before. New day socks. Yeah, new day socks. <laughs> and wow, they just they were just literally taking everything in that cart and throwing it all away. They just gave away like hundreds of dollars of merch right there. Yeah, and those that was merch that you probably couldn't even got at the event that night. <laughs> yeah, that was crazy. Um, the match ends with Strowman basically just kicking the crap out of everybody. <laughs> and then uh, he tags himself in when Jericho's trying to apply the walls and, and wins with his Batista power slam, whatever the fuck that was. He did like basically the Batista bulldog. move and won. And after the match, Rollins pedigrees Jericho, just, I guess, just showing some deception. I don't know why you're showing deception. You're supposed to be, you're, this is not good chemistry, guys. <laughs> like, you're going to a match on Survivor Series this Sunday. You need to work well together, and you pedigree Jericho after the match. It's great. Strowman just kind of like... Yeah, just, he just just watch it. He didn't give a fuck. <laughs> so, I guess, God. okay match? Yeah, I okay. I guess, if it was Twitter, I'd give it okay. It's a standard cra- raw match, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it's boring, nothing special. The best part of the matches were at the end, and the promo was before. Standard raw. Um, we'll move on. Brock Lesnar and Goldberg stare down. We had the fucking wall of security right between them. Like half of them facing one way, the other facing the other way. Um, they got the, the, funny, funny. the funny face from Goldberg <laughs> that we we have screenshotted and saved now. God damn. And I guess there's a Brock Lesnar one too where he's like, <sighs> like he has a weird face as well. I just I just found it funny that they had this, the wall of security and like Goldberg's yeah. like peeking over the security. <laughs> and I just, Paul Heyman trying to get his promo out and Goldberg kept telling him to shut up. Shut up, Paul <laughs> And Paul Heyman's getting pissed the off. Buffalo crowd was really behind Goldberg. <laughs> oh my God. He was so over. Holy crap. And at one point, Brock Lesnar got in the mic and said, shut the hell up. Wow, to the he crowd. talked. Lesnar talked. He got paid a million dollars to say shut shit. the hell up. Four words. Wow. Lesnar talked. Four That's words. Four unbelievable. Words. We got to we get this is a this is a moment here. I got to this, this could be a slammy. And then he kept saying or Goldberg said talk about my kids one more time Paul Heyman. Yeah. And then uh Brock Lesnar like takes off Goldberg takes off his shirt. 
just trying to anger Lesnar good. even more. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Looks like he's still in good shape. Lesnar pushes the two security guards down in front of Goldberg. And for some reason, the security guards don't go after Brock Lesnar. It's almost like Paul Heyman hired those security guards. Because they all turn around and start trying to beat the crap out of Goldberg. And he just, my God, man. Some of the shots Ferocious. look real, man. He yeah, was ruthless. He, he threw that one guy over the top rope, almost threw himself over when yeah. he did it. <laughs> Yeah, obviously ring rust. Um, but then, like, he clears the ring. The last security guards just run out of the ring. They didn't even, they're like, fuck this shit. And then Brock Lesnar's on top of the ring. Even he rips his shirt off. Oh, that was they're a getting, nice shirt. That was yeah. the, the, the slam, uh, slam City. Suplex. <laughs> Suplex. <laughs> slam City. Yeah. No. Bring that back. Worst shirt ever. <laughs> Suplex City, Buffalo, New York. I really wanted that. That's the only reason I'm mad I didn't get to go was that shirt. That's yeah. it. And then, uh, nope, doesn't just eat. Again, you you said he just doesn't go in the ring. It's better. Save it for Survivor Series. Save the hype. Yep. So, and that's the end of the segment. And now uh, Goldberg wipes his sweat with Brock Lesnar's shirt. And throws shirt. It. I mean, it's, it was anticlimactic, but whatever. I guess it's typical that we have people, to save stuff for the pay-per-view. Some people were criticizing this, saying that how is Goldberg going to last 50 minutes with Brock Lesnar when he, la- when he was already sweating after 30 seconds of security guards? Look at Shane McMahon when he came back. He was sweating balls the first time he was in the ring. I guarantee you it's it's the nerves and it's, I guarantee you it's the lights. The lights are fucking bright, shine. They, they have to shine bright at that certain spot on the ring. People don't know that it's hot when you have that many lights shining at you all at once and that close. You don't feel it because you're in the crowd because the lights aren't shining at you. They're shining at the, the wrestlers in the ring. It's, it's fucking hot. And, like, you, you, you haven't been in a wrestling ring for 12 years. You don't know how hot it is in the arena. You have, like, 18,000 people crammed in an arena. Obviously, the arena is going to be freaking hot no matter how many fans are going. Like, you're, you're going to be hot. Especially Brock Lesnar is used to it because he's been more in the WWE ring than he's ever been in the last two years. So what he's, about him when he goes through his fucking pyro and it's yeah. like all coming at him? Like, Or what a freaking Brock Lesnar in a match. He's sweating within the first three minutes of the match. Looks like he just jumped in a pool. Yeah, so and that, they're criticizing Goldberg. I think that point's irrelevant. Yeah, literally it's, it's 100% irrelevant. Um, so let's move on. Sasha and Charlotte team together. That's an interesting team there, right the there. Face, to face Nia Jax and Alicia Fox here. Now, the funny part of this entire match was that you, we know the feud between Nia Jax and Alicia Fox and how crazy it was in the last month. There was no deception between these guys in the entire match. It was like they didn't give a shit about those two. <laughs> they just gave a shit about the Charlotte. They worked Sasha. together. They were tagging properly. There was no like, oh, I'm gum going in this time. For some reason, it's like we're supposed to be, we're supposed to forget that these guys almost killed each other in the last month. <laughs> Alicia Fox and Nia Jax, like, team, like, tagging in yeah. clean. So they did, literally, they, they put the spotlight again on, like, this is, goes back to what happened in the State of the Universe after how Daniel Bryan and Shane Man criticized Raw for putting the spotlight on just Sasha and Charlotte and no one else. Prime example right here. We're made to forget that Nia Jax and Leisha Fox hated each other for the last month. And the spotlight was solely around Sasha and Charlotte in this match because there was some deception. There was some pushing and shoving between the two. But eventually it led to like uh, Alicia Fox doing a cross body off the top rope. And it rolled up into a bank statement for Sasha Banks. And Charlotte, um, Nia Jax trying to get back in the ring. Charlotte like, gave her a big boo. Yeah. So Sasha Banks picking up the win in Buffalo, and I'm not fucking there. And you're not there. And I'm not there. First time she's there. And I'm you not better there. hope she gets the win on uh, Sunday. Fuck, I better. I'll be uh, or I'll be very blissed off. Ooh, <laughs> sort of uh, irony there because she'll be there too yeah. in the same match. I can't wait for that. Yeah. We'll get into the predictions, but uh, moving so, on. I, I don't know. Th- that just did not make sense. Yeah. I don't know. I-, I felt like Charlotte and Sasha are the ones supposed to be carrying their Raw team. And they they showed them fighting each other, continuing the feud that's already obviously there. Like we're not we're not stupid WWE, <laughs> so I don't know. It, it felt weird too. I don't. I didn't like it. Um, so for that, I'm gonna move on. Yep. Enzo and Cass teamed up with the club to face <laughs> Golden Truth and Sh- I mean they have to face Golden Truth and Shining Stars because who else is they gonna fucking face right now? So you gotta have them in there. Um, the best part of the match was the ending again. Typical Raw. Um, the teams are working together. They showed the club teasing that working together with Enzo and Cass. They're like, yeah, Enzo, get up there. Do your finish move, the, the boom shakalaka, whatever it's called. <laughs> and then they're like, they go to the, he's waiting for the tag. And they're like, nah, I'm just going to pick Anderson up the win. Pins just him pins instead. him instead <laughs> and picks up the victory. That was for the, that's, the only, that's the highlight of that match and the only thing I want to talk about because that's it. There's nothing, nothing else happened in this match. 
What about the deception between Golden Truth and Shining Stars? Oh, I guess, but that's the obvious. No, I mean, they didn't do that. Oh, yeah, because, again, Golden this is Truth- the last match. Because the Shining Stars basically stole the position away from Golden Truth. But we didn't even see that. No. They should have been like it should have been like the shining stars like giving another brochure to R Truth distracting him from the match or something. They did do one spot at the end of the match where I think Primo or Primo was in the outside of the ring and like R Truth kicked him or something. Oh like yeah, that. yeah. But it was nothing big. Again, they 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 make us forget and focus on the obvious Enzo and Cash and Club feud. It's like we're made to forget about Golden there's Truth five and Shining team, Stars. There's five people in each match. We should yeah. care the same equally. And maybe all five. who knows? Did, did, right here is a spot where they could have also had a tag team come in, Slater yes. and Rhino come yeah. in, or There's someone just make an appearance and distract someone, something. But no, but we get that in the very next segment, which we're going to talk about now. The brand warfare segment. Oh my god, just <laughs> craziness all around. Both Raw and SmackDown commissioners and GMs were in the ring, both promoting each other's brand and making fun of each other's brand. A lot of shots back and forth here. I mean, there was more shots in the state of the universe after raw but there's still a little bit here um i marked out pretty hard when you saw aj styles and kevin owens standing there with titles yeah that was <laughs> in the same ring <laughs> stephanie calls team raw calls team raw down and then dana brian shane like tells Steph, they're like you wouldn't think that we didn't come without backup and out comes Team SmackDown through oh, the crowd. Oh, they all come through the crowd. That was great. <laughs> they had Ellsworth flying Following behind here. Ambrose. God. Cole's like, there's Ellsworth. We're like, oh my God, like, it's a big deal. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, Owens and Styles are the first ones to talk to each yeah. other and chirp each other. I was marked out. That was just a nostalgic moment, both had, with titles. Like, yeah, you had just, all five in the, both teams just like looking at each other in the yeah, ring. Yeah, uh, Jericho saying, welcome to the Kevin Owens show and claiming his title means more than his world title and then AJ Styles AJ Styles' comments actually meant like they actually were true like he's like this you got a title. universal title this is the act this is the WWE world heavyweight championship the championship that's been defended since who knows how long like this is the more meaningful title and he's right it, <laughs> it, it means more you look yeah. at both titles and you look and think which one's more relevant this piece of shit red looking title it, who, it's not even a year old yet <laughs> or you look at that title yeah I'd say the world title all day Jericho Oh God, in. Jericho cuts but, in. <laughs> but he, he first hugs Kevin Owens. He's like, yeah. my best friend, my best friend. Styles like, oh yeah, Chris, I remember when me and you tagged. Yeah. And then you stabbed me in the back like you do everyone else. Oh. Jericho says, you know what? You know what they say to you, Styles? You just made, made the, the list. list. Styles, the list. I don't like your soccer, soccer mom, mom haircut. haircut. So you know what? Soccer <laughs> mom haircut. You, you just, just made, made the, the list. list. And it's going on with this promo. Yeah. And he's like, wait a minute, wait a minute. What the hell is that? <laughs> Pointing at Ellsworth who's in the Ellsworth background. standing on the apron. <laughs> Ellsworth's like, what? What, what? what do you mean? What, who are you, Chins McMahon? <laughs> He's like, attention, attention. There is a... <laughs> uh, can someone help this lost child find his parents at ringside? <laughs> like, just ripped Ellsworth apart. Oh, he's like, you know what? You know what? You get no chin. You just made the list. <laughs> Yeah, he said, you know, and then the, oh, he, he starts says, crying. You look weird. Yeah, you He's look like, weird. Yeah, weird looking people. Yeah, you know what happens to weird looking people? They just make the list. <laughs> Elder starts like crying because he didn't want to be on the list. He like tweet after. He's like, I love Jericho and I'm sad I'm on the list. Because <laughs> he had the whole talk is Jericho podcast. Oh, with them. God. And then like they go on to the Bray Wyatt and Strowman uh, yes, stare down. I was looking forward to that. That was a lot of hype. And so, uh, what, Braun, what the hell, man? Yeah. Like, they, I, I made you, and now yeah. look what you've done. You betrayed us, so I'm going to finish what I started. And then Randy Orton steps in, and there's, like, a big pop for that. Lot, looks like a lot of people want to see the Randy Orton Braun There's Strowman a lot of Randy down. Orton fans in Buffalo. Every time I go, Randy Orton's always over for some yeah. reason. I don't know what it is about the Buffalo crowd, but... I think it's, like, with every... Like, Randy Orton just gets over. Just, uh, the most boring superstar on the mic somehow it gets more over than a lot of people because of fucking finisher yeah i guess and then ambrose it didn't even say a word no, you Reigns know what didn't say a single yeah, word either okay Reigns rollins, didn't say either. rollins said something too he said uh oh he said to shane he's like shane you got a lot on your plate and he's like you have no idea what roman and i are capable of when we're on the same page oh shield shield tease yeah, and then D- Dean just grabs him like, you know what? He's walking up and down the team. And just, just starts hit, brawling. He hits Jericho over the head with the, the mic, and then they just start brawling. Oh, God. This was a good brawl. This and, was a uh, really good brawl. It's back and forth. It obviously going to end with the Raw team on top. We even had the RKO out of nowhere from Randy Orton, obviously. We had the, the, the shield powerbomb. Yeah, the that? shield powerbomb by Seth and Rollins. And Seth it, and Rollins. Powerbomb Seth oh, and out Rollins. of the ring. So, oh, yeah. 
uh, Seth and Rollins. Seth, Seth and Rollins. Rollins. <laughs> Rollins and Reigns, and yeah. then they power bombed them all. Was it who they did power bomb out of the, out of the ring? I forget, but they power bombed them onto everyone else. Yeah, <laughs> such a great beatdown. This is exactly what we needed. Cross brand warfare brawl and a brawl on top, obviously because it's Monday Night Raw. Braun and Strowman just kicking everyone's ass. God, Jesus, just beats the shit out of everyone. I'm like, this, this is going to be an interesting match at Survivor Series. Like, it's going to be. And then, of course, they have Team Raw looking strong, right? And they oh, had yeah. Owens throw the world title at the ground like it was worthless. Oh man, that was a lot of heat for that. I give him a lot of that heat, was, and that's yeah. my boy. So it's that hard. Was, that was symbolic. But. Yeah. But that's Vince McMahon, man. He made Raw. He Raw is the flagship show, and he's always going to make Raw the flagship show. Yeah, the ending was hype, but yeah. most of the show was boring. They yeah. tried to have the teams team up, but if they yeah. wanted to do that, they should have not have the deception between the teams. Yeah. And again, we said too that they should have had the tag teams at least show do up. something. Uh, and show up. Another bad. They had Bailey on commentary for the women's match. She uh, wasn't even in a match. Uh, they had one women's match. Yeah. We could have had Bailey versus Dana Brooke again for like the hundredth time, but still would have been another match. Maybe they finally realized, okay, we're not going to put Dana Brooke in a match anymore. Yeah, because you're going to fucking hurt Bailey. People. God. Maybe it's a good thing. Yeah, maybe I'm actually should turn this around, but okay, you know what? Thank God Bailey was on commentary. She saved herself from getting injured. Um, but my rating this week, seven out of 10 for Raw. Uh, I think that's a pretty good ring. The seven obviously includes the brawl, the scarf of Jericho. Um, if I had to point anything else out, the Brock Lesnar and Goldberg did increase the hype a little bit. I'll add that in there too. And that's pretty much it. And that, that takes it all up. Um, three points for the brawl. Goldberg and Lesnar, one point. Uh, what else did you say? I said the scarf of Jericho. The scarf of Jericho gets a point for sure. And one point that's it that was like the best line ever he loses a half point because Strowman ripped it oh, okay. ripped his other stuff. oh damn it Strowman and I'll give a point to Sasha for winning in Buffalo so I will give Raw a 6 mm-hmm. out of 10 that's a good score I can appreciate that that's better than what I've given Raw lately yeah. so yeah. I, I, I'll, I can appreciate that the middle of the show just garbage and yeah. the teaming up of like it was irrelevant yeah. and not showing any of the Smackdown tag teams yep. so I'll give it a 6 all right, so we run to the blue brand, and actually the highlight of the week because Bra or, or sorry SmackDown from start to finish was the better show. It was incredible. Uh, again, I think the cons for this show: there's too many commercials. They had two commercials during the IC title match, and, and to point out, they had the Brock Lesnar Goldberg promo. Yeah, like and that lasted minutes. like 15 minutes. That took away 15 minutes of a two-hour show. And then they promoted the stupid shooter show. Yeah, oh my god, that which cut off Undertaker doing the throat slash at the end. I guess for people on the USA Network, they didn't even see Undertaker. They didn't even see the camera turn around and show Undertaker's slur- throat slash. It cut out right behind him. Wow. <laughs> Sucks to be you guys, I yeah, guess. Yeah, we saw it. Yeah, we saw it here. <laughs> we didn't get to see the thing where they should have showed on TV after, where Kane came out and they did like the Undertaker and Brothers of Destruction pose on the stage. I don't know why they didn't show that. Because it probably would have taken too long for Undertaker to walk out. Yeah, of the I ring. guess. <laughs> That's why they should so, have it on uh, Sports Network, like we do have, like we have yep, up here, not yep. some crappy USA Network. Yeah. So, so SmackDown, uh, we got Dan Bryan and Shane coming out to some massive pops. Wilkesport Scratton, you guys were lit, as Ronaldo would say. You guys were you spelt it out. It's L I T. Like out here. they were freaking loud all night from start to finish. Great crowd, you guys. Scranton, you made the list of good crowds. You definitely made an honorary list. I definitely would love to see WWE go back there in the near future. It's a small think. arena, like it's an AHL arena, but yeah. it's still good. Uh, you guys were hyped. You guys were lit. You made SmackDown that much better for us. So. We opened the show with Dolph Ziggler and Miz for the Intercontinental Championship. Again, I didn't like the two commercials. The, the second commercial was like right at, after a near fall, which didn't really make any sense. But really, really good match. This match lasted like 20 minutes. Like this was a this is this, 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 this is what I mean. Smack, this is what makes SmackDown the better show than Raw. There's more wrestling and less bullshit on SmackDown, and we got 20 minutes of freaking pure wrestling for the Intercontinental Championship. And it was a good match. I mean, Miz and Ziggler, we've seen it like 10 times, yeah. but it seems to always be a good match. Yeah. And you know what? Thinking about it now, like everyone says like the Miz should be tr- one, part of the trade. I think Miz will get ruined if he goes to Raw. You think he deserves to be on SmackDown? He goes, look, since Miz has gone to SmackDown, he's done better than he ever did on Raw. Like he had the title, but... Yeah, he was just irrelevant. 
I think he's more relevant on SmackDown. He is. And with the whole Daniel Bryan factor. Yeah. Because it, he wouldn't be going against Stephanie. Yeah, they, they did another thing on Talking oh, wow. Smack after. They, they had another stare down. I think this is going to lead. I guarantee you Daniel Bryan's going to wrestle again. And it's going to be against Miz. And I'll be, you know what? That's a good enough match for Daniel Bryan because I don't think he could seriously get hurt in that type of match. I think Miz is good at selling. Miz so, is a safe competitor. Yeah, he's a really sa- he's never injured anybody. I think he's a really safe competitor for Daniel Bryan. So I think that match is actually going to happen sometime in the future. So we have like the ending of the we had Spirit Squad come down again. Of course, I'm like fuck. Of course, they got to fucking come out. Like we need them on TV more. <laughs> they um, get super kicked by Ziggler. Yeah, and then Ziggler goes for a roll up pin. And then, like, Maurice, like, shoves. Yeah, because they're, they're on the ropes, and the, the ref couldn't count. So Maurice pushes them away, and it ends up being Mi- uh, Ziggler on the bottom, Miz on top for the win. Great. So Maurice gets involved uh, once again, and Miz is now the intercut. They ruin a possible oh, match of the year candidate that everybody yeah, wanted to see. For me, for Ziggler. this is the point in the show. Where it all went. This this is the point show where it took away a ten out of ten for me for SmackDown. This point right here, I would have gave it ten out of ten if if Dolph Ziggler had a one. That would have been perfect. This sets up match of the year at, for, with Sami Zayn Survivor Series. But now we get Miz, and then you. Look, but people always say you can look at it two ways, and maybe you look at it both it. ways. Maybe, yeah. maybe they're maybe they realized how hype of a, how good of a match that was. Maybe yeah, they're going to save it for Rumble. Yeah, or, it, it, yeah. it just it'll take away from Goldberg and Lesnar, and that's Vince's freaking boner match of the of the match that or of the night that night. So he doesn't but, want to take away from that. <laughs> poor that, Ziggler I, getting I know. jobbed again. <sighs> this poor guy, man. And honestly, the IC title is starting to piss me off now because it's starting to be like the women's title on Raw where there are two guys mm-hmm. going back and forth with it now. You know, I can I actually make a small prediction here. I think, uh, and I'm gonna, it's good to say, I have to reveal my one match prediction for Survivor Series now and we'll talk about it later in the Survivor Series prediction podcast. But I think Miz is going to retain at Survivor Series. Uh, Zayn will get transferred over to SmackDown. And then at TLC in December, it'll be a triple threat ladder match for the IC title. Dolph Ziggler, Miz, and Sami Zayn. Oh, that's a pretty good prediction. Yeah, I think that's going to happen. There, maybe this is maybe this is August trade, and it's a fatal four way. Who knows? There you go, land of opportunity. Cesaro they, can get they another were title. At the match. end of the state, the state of the WWE, like how bad Cesaro and, and Sami Zayn want to go to SmackDown. Oh my God! Like we we didn't talk about that. Can we point out that if you guys haven't seen the state of the WWE universe thing after raw go watch it it'll be the best half hour you've ever watched not even breaking the fourth wall you would have broke like the fourth wall of china with yeah this, with, like with, dan o'brien shane mcmahon stephen mcmahon and mick foley basically unscripted. unscripted half hour of basically telling it how it is basically shit that we talk about on the show they talked about and i'm like oh my god there's even the one point where dan o'brien's like you don't know what it means to be here something like that for 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 a long time He's like Mick Foley. You went you you went over to TNA and wrestled over there. I'm like, oh the my TNA. god, he mentioned TNA. <laughs> wow, <laughs> wow, like just and like the, an example of stuff that he was talking about was he said that SmackDown's women's division is better because we give all of our women a chance, not just two of them. Yeah, and like I love like it. That. It was such a good argument back and forth. I it, loved it. it. It seemed like it was real too. Like yeah. there, between Mick Foley and Daniel Bryan, like saying like who. Nobody knows it better than me. Well, actually, I do because you actually had a spot on TV before WWE or on ECW or yeah, whatever. Yeah. Daniel Bryan's like, I came from nowhere. Yeah, I came from all the indies wrestling my entire life and working for my spot. That's so. that's the WWE I like when you don't know if it's real or fake. Yeah. That's when it's the best. It was great. So if you guys didn't watch it, go find YouTube or whatever you have to do, the network, go watch it. It was probably the greatest thing I've ever seen. It, 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 the half an hour is worth your time if you're yeah. into that stuff. So we'll get back into SmackDown. And after the Ziggler and Miz match, we had the uh, uh, Alexa backstage thing with Daniel Bryan. Oh yeah, she does <laughs> deserve like, a title match. Yeah, she's like pointing out that Becky like shouldn't have didn't win clean. Is she's she's right? <laughs> when is she gonna get a rematch? Yeah, and then fucking Coach Natty comes in with her with her uh, chimes in whistle. Whee! Oh my god! <laughs> and she end, Na- Alexa ends up calling Natty ch- Chumba Wamba. <laughs> yeah, because the because she Natty's quoting the song. I get knocked down. I don't. I get up. You know that song. I get knocked down. I get, get up, up again. again. Yeah, she's she's quoting it. <laughs> she's like, really, Chumba Wumba, Natty. Really, Chumba Wumba. <laughs> she's so savage. I oh man, it. It, not a part of the great. not a team player at all. I'm actually it. surprised Natty didn't say anything about two paws. 
God. She did on Talking Smack, but Great. I don't want to get into it. Yeah. And then the next we have uh, Kalisto versus a new NXT call up. This is this is th- okay. This part of the show, I'm like, what? Whoa. His name. Was- I think that they did that to promote because they're at a land of opportunity. I think that's the reason. I think why. that, and they wanted to have Kalisto face a cruiserweight leading up yeah. to his cruiserweight match. His name was Oni Lorkin. And. I don't like the name. I tweet about it. I'm like, I think it definitely seems like he should have a different name because that's a weird name, Oni Lorkin. Um, I've never seen this guy on yeah, the Yeah, me team. either. Uh, he looked promising a little bit. but this like weird ass like rah, yeah, thing It, it in sucked the at one point in the match. Oh, Botch City, Kalisto. Oh my God, Botch Listo over here. I don't know what the hell that was, but He's channeling his inner buddy, yeah. sit, botch Kara. <laughs> but Oni like kind of like saved it a little bit, not a lot, but a little bit. But my god, kind of that was the worst botch I've ever seen. He still tried to go off the rope and like do like a spinning uh, uppercut thing, yeah. and he just like fell, fell. off the second rope. <laughs> and then at least Oni like tried to pin him. Yeah. But oh god, Kalisto good for wins. Oni on that part. Kalisto wins with Slita Del Sol, just yeah. hyping him up for his yeah. match. Uh, for that, with for Brian the, Kendrick, like, yeah. It, it, we keep saying that the Kalisto is going to win this. Yeah, because the cruiserweights are coming to SmackDown for 205 Live, which they keep not mentioning. So I'm like, okay, this is just obvious now because Kalisto is the winning cruiserweight title, and that's going to make the division go to SmackDown. And then I guarantee you it's going to be something like next week that uh, Shane Man and Dion Bryan are like, shit, we only have a two-hour show. How about we put them and make them their own show, 205, and it'll be an hour after SmackDown. Guarantee that's how it's going to work. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> but we, we move on to the, the best backstage segment. Ever. It's probably one of the highlights of SmackDown. You have all the teams in the back. All the tag teams in the back getting hyped. And Uso's acting not heel in this for some but, reason. But I don't mind that because I like to see the teams getting along. Yeah. And like forgetting the heel and face thing for one night, you know? Okay, for that, okay, I can give him props for that. It just, it felt weird to me because they're dressed as heels. I'm like, they're acting like the old Uso's. I'm like, oh, this is so weird. Where's their face paint? <laughs> then Slater comes out and he's like, listen, you guys, I got a motivational speaker for us tonight to get hyped for Sunday. King Booker, how? <laughs> what does that? I mean, it didn't make sense, but really, King Booker. He comes out with his uh, his robe. Yeah, and but his it's for the 900th on. episode of SmackDown. I King Booker it. is the biggest part of SmackDown, so it was great. King Booker, oh my god! King Booker receives my boss moment of the week. Yeah, and then uh, who who inter- Oh, the fashion police interrupted him. Like, wheel, wheel, wheel. Uh, come they call him King Booker. <laughs> Tell me. You, you didn't, didn't just say breaks that character. breaks character and goes off on him. No, kid, you take that, sucker. Like and gives, said, it makes him wear the Team SmackDown shirt. I wish there was Queen Charmel, but. Yeah, uh, and then a King Booker. King, King Booker. And like Mojo Rawley. <laughs> it's, it's hilarious. He's just so hype. He, he's, uh, he should be the, the team captain, man. Yeah. He's just like King Booker should up. be the team mascot. He should, he should lead them out. That would be great. King uh, Booker. <laughs> <sighs> so God. moving on we got uh nikki versus your girl bay, bay mella, mella. Mm, my lord did she ever look bay last that night <laughs> my that's last night yeah yeah so oh. pretty standard nikki and carmella match it was actually really was, good for the most carmella part. was dominating most yeah. of the match and we got right in the middle of the match the crowd's all facing one way i'm like oh something's happening now we got Charlotte Flair wearing a raw shirt. Coming through the crowd with a ticket in her hand. Yeah. I got a ticket. Front row, eh? Yeah. Oh, How wow. How get that? <laughs> oh, man. And there's the one point in the match. They roll out of the ring. Nikki goes up to Charlotte. Charlotte's like bickering. Come on, Nikki. Come on. And Nikki just loses her cool. Gives just, her the forearm. Oh, that was oh, a pretty man, good man, just shot. beats the crap out of Charlotte. Drags her into the ring. Out comes more of the Raw team. They're beating down on Carmella and Nikki, and out comes the SmackDown team. And there we go. Love we it. got Loved it. Diva Warfare. Women Warfare. Women Warfare. My Lord, what a brawl. Fucking Nia Jax was taking out everyone, didn't he? <laughs> I don't know who she's trying to take out, but the camera moved in time for the person not to be there anymore. So it kind of looked like there was no one there in the first place. It looked like she just ran to the wall and then crashed. Through the barricade. God. <laughs> She went right through the barricade. And there was no give. That barricade just lost its mind. <laughs> opened up and hell break, broke loose, man. Just shit everywhere. I marked out so hard, though, because the, the, when the brawl started, it was Alexa and Sasha going Thanks. at it. It's like, wow, man. Like, who do you cheer for? <laughs> Gotta cheer for Sasha, but... Uh, so I mean, I, I didn't really see. Alexa. I should have looked if Carmella went after Bailey at all. Because ba- that's think... just a weird spot for Bailey to be in. She's not that type of woman. But I we like it. I like Ra being the... Like, what do you call it? Like, 
the dogs like yeah. coming in on like invading yeah. someone else's show and, and of just, course like, they kind of look dominant obviously like it, it's stupid how they keep making it look they make raw look dominant on a smackdown show but then it ends up being smackdown looking dominant crowd again the crowd was a big part of this as well after they kicked all the raw people out the crowd got so hyped with all the smackdown ladies standing tall in the ring so beautiful spot well, well, well done. done. They should have played the SmackDown theme, though. Not fucking Nikki Bella's theme. Yeah. That pissed me off a little bit. It was like when they played Roman Reigns' theme on Raw, when the yeah. team Raw well, I thought they, I thought they, uh, they played Raw, nope, the Raw they theme. Played, nope, they played oh. Roman Reigns. Well, they played the Raw theme when they all came out, I guess. Yeah. But whatever. Of course. Um, yeah. I think they just should play the brand theme, not a single individual. It's not singling them out. Um, but this was a great brawl for the women, man. Yeah. Really Honestly, I, out of the three... Uh, Survivor Series matches. I'm obviously saying that I want to see the women's one the most. Mm-hmm. But we'll move on. We oh, get. Oh, God. Okay, this- so I'm sorry. I'm wrong too. This next match brought it down again. This <laughs> was the garbage section of. SmackDown. We had Team Relevant versus Team of Irrelevant. American Alpha, Usos, Brazongo, and Hype Bros with Slater and Rhino at ringside. And this is how hype he Slater is. He was getting. The crowd was saying, We want Slater the entire match, and they weren't even in the match. That's insane. Yeah, they they were saying we want Slater, and he's like pumping up the crowd. And again, another spot where they could have had some tag teams cross over, and they did not. Like, at least have a team like come and grab them while the other teams yeah. are focused on the match, and have like a team start beating up on yeah. Slater Rhino because they're not in the match. But instead, right? we get them facing. So team here we go. Irrelevant. Here we go. So we get the Ascension, and the Vaude Villains, who are two tag teams up and coming. And in it sucks because I love the Ascension. They should be way. They should be way more relevant than they already are. Vaude Villains it sucks because they were good in NXT. And now they're just being these, kicked to the curb. These two teams are the teams that are being pushed aside on the new yeah. era, and they get teamed with. Of course, we get the Spirit Squad, who are already. We've mm, seen them great. twice on this show. We've seen them the in the Spirit Squad. Got more time than Apollo Crews and Baron Corbin. Let's just let's just put that in everyone's mind right twice now. Twice as much. Twice as much. And your boys. The headbangers, crickets. Uh, Thank God we didn't see any of their entrances. Fuck <laughs> sakes! Why are these guys still around? And if anybody you can fucking bring back to the WWE for a certain spot, you chose the Spirit Squad and the fucking headbangers, the most irrelevant pieces of shit ever. We've seen the headbangers three times. The headbangers got more are getting more fucking TV time than Apollo Crews and Baron Corbin. This is pathetic. See, this is why I don't understand They're SmackDown. They're so bad. The land of I, opportunity. Who, the land of opportunity to guys that work for fucking Hot Topic and a bunch of fucking male cheerleaders, one that looks like gold dust without goddamn fucking paint. They don't need to be on fucking TV anymore. I'm hoping after this, they're done. I hope so, because the land of opportunity more like the land of, hey, you want to wrestle again? Come back. We'll give you a shot. Fuck these new guys. So... <laughs> I the match hate the was just a hey, go. They look like shit. The match was a clusterfuck. The only good part in the match was when the Usos did like their Uso crazy thing and like jumped on every other team. It was just bad. It was a terrible tag match. Um, I didn't like it. The headbangers try to do. I don't even know why they're trying to go to the top rope again to their spot. Yeah, careful. You might break something. And I the pull a hammy. American Alpha ends up getting the win on Hot Topic needs a back for your shift tomorrow. Yeah. Don't at, hurt l- at least Thrasher from the headbangers took the pin. At least he took the American Alpha sure. finisher. Great. So, the team relevant one, that was literally the worst tag team yeah. match I've ever seen. If that was supposed to hype up their match on Sunday. That was the worst idea ever. Worst booking I've ever seen. Michael Hayes, get your shit together, man. But, why would they not include any of the Raw teams? Like, not even one. Yeah. Not even New Day came There should have been some warfare between the tag teams. Like, New Day could have came out and like, played the trombone or something and distracted yeah. them or something. Yeah. But whatever, we'll move on to the main event, which was the, the cutting, cutting edge. Edge, edge returns. He's he got, got long hair. He's got long hair, and he's got his beard. And I guess everyone's like, "What the fuck's with the beard?" It's for his TV, t- the TV his show. show Vikings on Discovery Channel. Um, edge coming back. He's got his hair back, and just that was just a, such a feel good moment. I had goosebumps. I was just like, and "Oh then man!" You hear Tony Chimmel announce, "Yeah, edge Tony Chim, the, the rated R superstar." superstar. I love that. He's at the got cutting it. edge with the men's team, Shane, uh, Dean Ambrose with Ellsworth, AJ Styles, Orton, and Wyatt. <laughs> it was kind of funny. He started off with, he's like, I'll, there's somebody in this ring that I want to shake their hand. He goes up to Styles, and then he starts and shaking the Ellsworth hand. hand. Yeah, that deserves it. Land he's of like, opportunity. you know what? I want to do a five-second pose. And as they're about to do a Styles, he's like, no. <laughs> no. No, no, no. Why do you want to do a pose with him? Yeah, you just make, this should be about me. Focus on me and ask me the question because I am the champ. That runs, runs the, the camp. camp. <laughs> Love Styles. Oh, he's so good. 
And then Edge goes through every other person. He goes, what about my uh, former partner in crime from Rated RKO? Rated He's like, do I, do, I have to, do I have to pull the string behind you to talk? Or do I have to pull the string that Bray Wyatt controls you to talk back there? I'm like, oh, <laughs> my God. And then right, you were just like in a blank stare like Festus. I don't know what the fuck that was. And then like, Bray Wyatt interrupts him and says, this is not the Randy Orton of old. This is the new Orton, a more deadlier viper. <laughs> oh, 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 shit. <laughs> deadlier viper. What is he going to do the same exact shit he's always done? Probably. Is the viper going to have a, a, a oh, sheet mask? Oh, he's going to have a different t-shirt. Oh, he's going to have a sheet mask. Oh, that makes him way more viper. Oh, man. Should've oh. Given, they should have at least given him Watch a Watch out for this guy. should have at least given him a Wyatt jacket or something. Jaya. He's got the same sweater. I'm like, okay, sure. Um, he just, he, he, sorry, he he put the, the hood on. Hood on. Oh. Over scary. his eyes. Oh, scary. Ooh. Ooh. Um, and then uh, I guess the Shane McMahon um, start talking about uh, start talking to Shane. Man, I think there's like an argument that goes on between AJ Styles and Shane and Dung Dung Undertaker. I'm like, we were oh, because, like, they're, they're, we're they're getting seg- close to the 11 o'clock the hour. Segment started with like yeah. 15 minutes. So I was like, wait, how are they going to do this segment and then Undertaker? So Undertaker comes out. My guys, he look ever. He doesn't look like he's missed a beat, guy. I I swear to God, he's he, I, he doesn't look like he get, he aged a day. <laughs> the guy looks the same for like the last ten years. He's like fifty. <laughs> Jesus. Um, starts talking about the Survivor Series and uh, he's uh, saying that he's first of all he's back, which we don't know exactly what that means yet. Which is the part time or full time basis? He's back at taking souls and digging holes. He says WrestleMania no longer defines, defines him. Me. Ooh. Ooh, so that's oh, that's awesome. If he's back on a part time basis like Kane, I'm all for that. Hundred percent. Show up once in a while and do something. He can make SmackDown that much better with like the Undertaker on the show. Yeah, that, that's a good hype for him. Um, I know it kind of uh, it's kind of like hypocrite kind of thing with Dana Bryan hyping saying SmackDown's land of opportunity we don't need part-timers <laughs> meanwhile Undertaker's coming back as a part-timer but I think he's they made it look like he's back full-time that's why he said like I'm back taking souls and digging holes blah 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 um, saying that uh, Team SmackDown better win SmackDown us- has been my home yeah and uh, Edge said that too Edge yeah. was talking about how SmackDown was his home he says Team SmackDown should better win a Survivor Series against Team Raw because or else they'll have to deal with the dead man I'm yeah. like, so that's why everyone's thinking that Randy Orton might screw over the team. I got a small ass prediction for that. We'll save it's that. Very, and we'll save that. Um, um, what was I going to say? If you would have told me that in 2016, I would see Edge, The Undertaker, and Shane McMahon on SmackDown together in the same ring. Mm, that was I crazy. wouldn't believe you. <laughs> that, that was awesome. That was just nostalgia all over the place. And ends off with Undertaker saying, Raw will rest in peace. Um, does the throat slash sucks for you guys didn't see it and after we we know that Kane came out and did the whole Brothers of Destruction thing so this was awesome this just basically just made Smackdown just the best ending I've ever seen just awesome Without through even, and through the only thing is both shows didn't end with a match no and it was a segment well there's a brawl Pro- in yeah. the first they one. probably had a dark match I don't know yeah. what it was but yeah. So I guess SmackDown, because of the stupid fucking hangbangers and Spirit Squad showing up in the end of the IC title match, I gave SmackDown a 9 out of 10 this week, beating Raw 100% for sure. Just without a shadow of a doubt, SmackDown won this week. Yep, I'm going to go ahead and agree with you. SmackDown gets a 9. Yep. Only minus the tag team match. And SmackDown again, beating out Raw for like consecutive weeks, man. It's just a better show. Consecutive SmackDown. weeks for like consecutive months. Yeah, I don't was, remember last time I voted Raw for a win. Yeah, it was the, probably the first Raw. It might have been the Raw that Sasha beat Charlotte for the title again. Which that was one? just biased as hell. <laughs> Which one? It's done it twice on Raw. <laughs> oh, man. But... Yeah, SmackDown 9 out of 10, so SmackDown definitely won this week. Props to SmackDown. I really yeah. hope that they don't go get the clean sweep. Yeah, oh my they don't God. get clean swept on I Sunday. Hope not. I really hope they at least win one. I'll, I'll be happy with one match. <laughs> but, you know, the last part of the show, I love my, this is my favorite part of the show just because of the, the intro music. And that is know. WWE Headlines. That's right. Welcome to WWE Headlines, the part of the show where we talk about any important news in the WWE. And today we have six topics. Six. Six. And that's the... F- we'll start off with the first one. WWE wants... Or wants, I guess... I don't say wants. Would like McGregor on WWE TV. 
He's gonna get a lot of heat with the people backstage. That's what I mean. Of all the stuff he said about how yeah. they're not. That's why I'm not fighters. sure how this will play out. It's a little, it's Honestly, on the fence. I don't want Conor McGregor in no. WWE. I'm not a fan. I of I guess him. Triple H and Vince say they have. Uh, he's got the. If they brought him back, it'd be like the Floyd, Mad- Floyd Mayweather thing. Maybe that kind of thing. Um, Triple H was at his fight on last Saturday, so this could be true. So who knows? Maybe he was just there to talk to him after, you know, play around, shoot shoot some ball. And I'm going, okay, well, what if we did this? You know, blah, blah, blah. But if McGregor is going to be that fucking asshole and, man, it's just he's not going to be well-received. It's going to be really bad if they do it. I think they should just stop and say, no, McGregor's fine with UFC. That's his thing. Stay away from WWE TV. Don't come. Just go away. Um, moving on, next bit of news. Total Diva season premiere tonight. Is Wednesday. Um, there is the absence of Eva Marie on the TV ad that was uh, looked at on, I saw it on Twitter, people pointed out that Eva Marie wasn't on the little TV ad in the bottom left uh, corner of the screen. So it's interesting. Hmm. Thank God. And also, breaking news, the season two of Total Bellas has been announced. Ooh, yay! Don't care. Um, moving on. Hulk Hogan close to a WWE return, maybe? It was noted and pointed out that he was in the WWE now, or then, now, and forever thing at the beginning of the show. So maybe WWE is uh, slowly phasing in Hulk Hogan for his uh, WWE return, maybe. Maybe at WrestleMania. So uh, we'll have to see. He should. They should bring back Hulk Hogan, man. Like, it just didn't... It was so wrong. Yeah, his case is settled him. now, and he was in a bad place when, when he said those comments back in 2006. Just forgive and forget. Let him come back, man. He's he, he's they the one thing him. people that don't watch wrestling associate with wrestling. When they, when they hear wrestling, they hear that would be, oh, yo, that Hulk Hogan, right? It's the one thing they think of. Just bring him back, man. Yeah. Speaking of legends, next bit of news. The Rock is named Sexiest Man Alive yesterday. Great. <laughs> But uh, this leads into the rumors of his return for WrestleMania are surfacing more. Um, he did not deny it in a recent interview. Someone, at, uh, as a news reporter, asked him, "Are you going to be at WrestleMania?" And he ends it off with saying, "Yeah, I'll see you at WrestleMania." So it's not a, it's not a possibility. Mm. He could show up in some way, maybe just like he did at uh, WrestleMania 32, maybe a mini match or something. But I know I've read WWE wants him an, an in ring capacity. They want him an in ring thing. At next year's WrestleMania, whether it be a match or not. So, whatever. You know, The Rock, he's nostalgia enough. Him showing up at WrestleMania just makes WrestleMania even better. And it, it, I don't care if he shows up and has a promo. It just makes it that much better. Yep. Um, another next bit of news, pretty sad news uh, involving Vader, WWE legend. He has been told by doctors that he has two years to live due to congestive heart failure from his football and wrestling career. So. Huh. Sad to say, a lot of people are, are pushing for him to be in the Hall of Fame, as he does deserve to be in WF Hall, or WB Hall of Fame and his time in WBF, WCW. You know, just incredible talent Vader was. And he was a big part of the old WBF back when, like, like the uh, between, I'd say, 95 and 97, he's a big part of the WBF. He was uh, one of the um, trailblazers for the, like, the bigger dude that yeah. would move around mm-hmm. in the ring, you know. So, so it's sad that he only got two years to live. So better make the two years worth it. Yeah. WWE should put him in the Hall of Fame. I think so. Before alive. he goes, at least for him to have a retirement speech. So yep. who knows? Maybe he'll be in this year. Um, last bit of news. As I said before earlier in the show, Lesnar is scheduled for a Buffalo live event uh, before WrestleMania. It's going to be in March. I forget what date. But Lesnar is supposed to headline that. And I think we should go to that. It'll be a road to WrestleMania one, so we'll see what happens when we come around there. But yeah, Lesnar is scheduled already for a live event in March before WrestleMania. That's interesting. That means he'll be there. Yeah, and probably hoping or hy- hyping up his match. So we'll see. Um, other than that, that's going to about do it for WWE headlines, and I think that's going to about do it for the rest of the show, ladies and gentlemen. So guys, tune in later this week for our predictions of NXT Takeover Brooklyn, Brooklyn Takeover Toronto. <laughs> God. Let's just rename it NXT Brooklyn, like, and, honestly. And Survivor Series, so tune in for that, ladies and gentlemen. That's going to wrap it up for week number 32 of the Lowdown Show, Brand Wars, on No Holds Barred Wrestling Podcast. We are your Canadian-based WWE podcast that reviews Monday Night Raw and Tuesday Night SmackDown from the past week. Also during the show, we have our Twitter poll segment called the Luke Gallows Polls. And WWE head... Oh, my God. I ain't playing the Luke Gallows Polls music, am I? I am. Look at that. Whatever, we're going to end off with Luke Alice Pulsman. I don't care. Um, 
Remember, every week the Lowdown Show is broadcasted live on Spreaker and it does not end with this theme. It ends with the D'Lo Brown theme. But it's broadcasted live on Spreaker at Spreaker.com slash NHBWP. And if you would like to join in the conversation and have your thoughts and questions and discuss right on this podcast, tweet us on Noel's Bar WP. Or we're dropping a comment on YouTube like King Scampoli, our YouTube fan. I am your host, the self-proclaimed greatest host, Kyle Masters, and I continue to be joined by my co-host, the boss, the blissful boss, Mr. Corporate himself, Corporate Cappy. Remember, don't bliss me off. Yeah, you know what? You know what? I'm not blissed off, but you know, I'm going to stop this right now. We're ending off with the D-Lo Brown theme. I do not care. I'm switching it right now. We are the Lowdown Show, so we end with the Lowdown theme. And as always on the Lowdown Show, we are reminding you to keep it on the Lowdown.